How you doing? Man, you're good looking. What do you think? Ready to start 2020? Yep. Let's do it. This is the automatic garage door opener. There's a little bit of a delay. Better watch out, Daryl. I can, I'm gonna film you pairing up your tire. That's great TV right there. What? <laughs> so yeah, in case you're new to the channel, we are strippers on this farm. The only problem is people pay us to keep our clothes on. No, we're getting started. The main focus today is to, or probably more like this month, <clears throat> is to try to go through all these bearings and make sure they spin. None of them have any hitches on them. And to, uh, We'll replace all these back ones here because these are these are our biggest problem because how we fertilize let me see if I can find a row that is presentable. But what we do is here's our what we call a liquid shift. There we go. Sorry I was on manual focus. But what this guy here is is a liquid shift by Surefire Ag. And this guy allows us to run multiple rates with this rig because in Nebraska, we farm a lot of pivots, and they're circles. Well, you usually have like a square quarter, so you usually have about four dry land corners, just depending on the farm, not always. But usually we do. Um, and so when we get to those corners, we like to be able to drop a rate down because out here in south central, south central part of Nebraska, our dry land won't raise a lot because typically we're a little bit more arid climate and our soils don't have quite the holding capacity as like an Iowa or an Illinois. And so kind of in our area, we figure our dry land is about 60% 60 60 of uh, on average of what the production would be on an irrigated part. And so when we get to those corners, we wanna be able to drop that fertilizer rate because we don't wanna waste fertilizer on those corners because fertilizer is a huge input on a, a corn and soybean operation. And so using technology like that liquid shift allows us to not have to stop, get out and switch a tube or orifice or something like that to do those rates. This can automatically adjust it as we go through the field. Like say for instance, we're going through the field and we're putting on 40 gallon to the acre. We get to that pivot corner, boom, it can drop it down to 10 or 15, whatever we figure. Cause we do more, we kind of split, apply some of our fertilizer. We'll come in later with the sprayer and apply a little more with our our burned down herbicide and whatnot. So um, that's why we run something like that on the, these machines is just so we can have that ability to, to vary those rates um, going through the field. And the reason why we need to, you just can't have your pump slow down and speed up. Well, you, you have to keep enough amount of pressure going through those tubes to get an even spread across all 12 rows or 16 rows or whatever the size of your applicator is. And so what an orifice is, is it kind of puts a restriction in the hose to kind of build up pressure in, in order to equalize that out across all the rows. When you go from like a 40 gallon rate to a 10 gallon rate or something like that, it won't create enough pressure and then you'll have an uneven application. Uh, what this will do is there's two sets of orifices. On, on the, this machine right here, 
Instead of the old silver discs, we uh, Surefire has tubes, orifice tubes, and they're different diameter of tubes, but they're like eight foot long. And what that allows too is sometimes you'll get um, debris in your lines. And instead of having a small single spot where it can collect in a disc, because that hole's gonna be smaller, that hole can be bigger over a longer uh, spread be an eight foot hose which will easily allow that debris to pass through a little simpler not that it can't get plugged but it takes a lot more and we find those to be really nice because we usually would get something in those silver discs you'd get like a chunk of plastic or something in there and then you'd have to check it out and usually those um man i got a lot of stuff growing on here but this is usually where you put those silver discs in on those this is a check valve and what this is is a diaphragm that when you shut the machine shut the liquid off it closes a lick a liquid diaphragm in there to kind of keep keep stuff from dripping we had show up guess what daddy's doing Fix. he's talking into a camera you want to be on the next video yeah yeah what are you gonna do for the next video i don't know <laughs> does that one good yeah is this dirty yeah yeah do we need to clean it yeah. Ooh. Sorry, I don't know where I was at. Now, I was trying to describe to him what we were doing, but uh, I was kind of describing orifices and stuff, but uh, nope. Hopefully uh, that made sense there. This one's dirty too. Yeah, they're all dirty. We got to clean this all off. Yeah. And get it set. We should have cleaned it off before we all put it away, but apparently we didn't get that done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're in charge of that next year, okay? Right now I'm going to go check up above our office to see uh, if we have any leftover bearings. If not, I'll order some more and we'll go from there. Here. You going to stay down there? Yeah. Yeah. I might be getting low on bearings. Got a little bit of a load. Yeah, I didn't want to bring the whole big box because they're full it. of different things. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Let's bring them over here to the table. They're bearings. There we go. Okay, we, I can help you with this. You can help me with this? Okay. We're going to let the one tripper kind of thaw out, okay? Okay. Because it's kind of cold and we're going to let it thaw out, clean it up a bit, and then start changing bearings on it, okay? Because okay. we don't want to fight trying to unfreeze everything. Okay. Go. So while he's doing that, I'm going to go in here, call and order some bearings, because we got some, just not all of them. Yeah, do you have any of those guys? They'll probably need 48 of those and 65 of the others. So a lot of my days this time a year is jumping between doing stuff in the shop and coming back in here and doing stuff in the office because not everything can be done a lot of times you're waiting on say you'll submit stuff to your banker or, or your whatever you got going on seed salesman agronomist then you kind of wait on them and then you come back to it and you go back and forth all the time it's not like you can just sit down get one thing done at a time it's a lot of things are broke out you get your side done then send it off wait for them to do their side send it back so you got a lot of those things too and so you kind of bounce back and forth when you can too, doing repairs and stuff like that. It'd be nice to be able to do everything at just boom, 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 but it's just, you gotta wait on others because, I mean, it takes a lot of people to make operations work too. So some of the things we also do is we'll send these tractors in to John Deere, we'll drive them down there, and we'll get them inspected just to see, make sure everything's all right. They'll put them on They'll do some tests, and I think they do oil scans and, and things like that. Just to make sure there isn't any major problems before we mount up all these tanks and, and get them ready to go. So hopefully soon we can start getting these in and rotate it through the shop. So on my way back from lunch, we're going to head to the shop and we're going to go uh, tear apart some of those bearings. At least we can get started on that so they're ready to be put back on. So here we go. So what we typically do on these basket bearings, just to take them off, there's three bolts here and three bolts there. 
but usually those bearings are stuck on there and they don't slide off so typically we just end up torching them off but we'll see what happens here This guy should be ready for new bearings and be put back on. So uh, now we just got 12 more to go. I don't know if I'll film all of them because I'll probably run out of battery. I'll give you a gist on uh, kind of how we start to do that. Maybe by the next video we'll be we'll get our uh, bearings in and start putting new ones on. I'll show you here pretty quick how we change one of these. I'll come along here. There was one that was kind of out. That one was fine. He was in here somewhere. It's hard to find a bad bearing these days. One of these was out, I swear. I swear I was watching earlier. Yep. He's locked up. Well, he'll move, but... Well... He's just... We're gonna change him anyway. What you gotta do on these guys is there's a snap ring involved. And so you gotta take a snap ring, take those out, and another snap ring inside, and... We'll go from there. That's how we want it. There's uh there's two bearings inside this guy. I don't know if you can if you can hold the light right. See where that break is in there? But, uh, this is a, just a seal or kind of a gasket if I can pull them out real quick. So there's a snap ring inside there as well that holds it in place. Problem is this is usually the bearing that needs to replace but this guy's the part that gets exposed to all the fertilizer and so instead of dealing with this guy it's easier to deal with this end because this snap ring comes out a lot easier and then we'll push the other one too with brute force. So 
So this was the one that was exposed to the outside. He's a lot harder to turn. He'll still turn a little bit. Sometimes they're all froze, but this is the one we're gonna replace right here. I'm gonna slide the new guy in from the other side. So since I kind of got started on some of these, I'll just kind of go through here and finish. I'll probably just take these off and then see where I'm at. That might be the end of the day for me, just getting these off and then we can torch them off whenever. But I'm always bouncing back between the office and this, but hopefully I got enough time just to get these off because that's part of the battle, right? Before I get started on that, I'm gonna need a little help, a little motivation. So I got all those taken off. We'll torch all those bearings and whatnot off tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. Nice thing about this time of year is there's always tomorrow, right? Except for that day comes when you see your neighbor out in the field and then you slap everything together and you run out there because you ain't gonna let him win, even though he already has. You farmers know what I'm talking about, right? One of the things I was gonna try to do though is while I'm, before I take off and go home, so these bolts right here, I take a lot of the, the fertilizer. I might try to see if I, I've done it before. I've found some stainless steel bolts before and put them in there. And so maybe I can see if I can find some stainless steel ones to replace those regular ones with. That way taking them on and off should be easier in the years coming ahead. So I'm gonna go in the office here and see if I can find some or figure that out, I guess. I better shut off the other light. So those of you uh, new to the channel here, I'm Rob O'Neill and this is O'Neill Family Farms. We're a family uh, partnership. There's four of us. Uh, my younger brother John, me, my older brother Tom, and then there's Dad. And uh, we farm here in South Central Nebraska. If you kind of look on a map, we're kind of north and east of Lexington and north and west of uh, Kearney. So uh, we're located near Sumner, Nebraska. Yeah, thanks for stopping by checking us out if you do like what you're seeing hit like and subscribe and uh, if they still have the little bell icon that's what re really matters because that'll alert you the next time i put out a video anyway so uh yeah i appreciate it and uh thanks for thanks for watching we'll catch you later guys see you